I don't need him. I need my sanity. Nigerians are among the most hardworking human beings on earth. Let's not ruin other people's chances. Everywhere we go now, they will say we are forgers. And you guys are not ashamed. But God is watching you. God is watching you. Oh, <laughs> me, I'm, I'm a man. No, I'm not a voluntary slave. I can't be. Even if it's my mother, or my, I'll tell you, I'm sorry. Go and read my antecedents. <laughs> I, I will say my own. I will not be rude to you. I'm not rude like some of the people around Tinubu who are rude to everybody, who abuse everybody. One of them is the article to go and apologize to, uh, to Tinubu. Was he the one that filled the form for Tinubu? Was Atiku the one that filled the form for Tinubu? Instead of admitting that you are incompetent. Yeah, the oppressed people love their oppressors. Yes, one of my favorite books is by a Brazilian author called Paulo Freire. He wrote Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Go and read it. Go and find it. We were in exile, that's all. I've never been a, a believer in the Tinubu's political philosophy. I have nothing against him, but I just don't share in philosophy of we hold a state for 24 years and we determine the power of life and death and who becomes what, who becomes billionaire, who does not become, mm -mm, I'm sorry, I would rather sit down and be eating my obeoni magi in my house. I don't have any problem with that. Anybody who can stomach it, good luck to them. I can't. I can't do it. I'm not in their, I'm not in their party. I've never been in their camp. So in case you don't know, 24 years, you should salute me that anybody in a country where most people depend on government for survival, who anybody who has been out of government for 24 years, 24 years, and I'm here standing, at 64, ha, I thank God, though. It's not easy. <laughs> I thank God. I love my freedom. I just love it. That's it. <laughs> I know a lot of people in that camp who are just deceiving. The people who love Tinubu absolutely, what are they gotten from it? <laughs> there is nobody who has sacrificed more than Tokumba Fukuyomi. Nobody. <laughs> nobody has sacrificed more than him. Have they made him anything there? So what am I looking for? If a man who put his head down on the chopping board and said, oh yeah, chop it. <laughs> so, me, I speak up from time to time. When Tinubu had problems at that time with, uh, uh, what's his name? With uh, Tokumbo, when Tokumbo wanted to be governor. I granted the interview and I told him, I said, what he's doing is wrong. He called me to his house in body law, we were in the study. He said, you are abusing the God of Tokumbo. I said, no, I'm not abusing the God of Tokumbo. I'm speaking because I think Tukumbo deserves the best. And if you are not going to support him, you should have told him so that he will not waste his resources. We used to invite our friends, Kawa Defi, Emi, Feng Bajabi, I mean, all of them to Ghana, you know, for a retreat over Tukumbo, you know, his plans for Lagos and everything. But nobody told him that they were not going to support him. And the man accepted it and moved on. So you don't know what I know. In my house, in my house, we used to bring people and we had beautiful plans, we had everything. I didn't fight Tinubu because he didn't give Tokumbo. I was not happy that he could not take him into confidence and say, ah, Tokumbo, I'm not going to support you. And so be it. Tokumbo would, then would not have wasted his money. During the Saraki saga, when they didn't want Saraki to be Senate president, I disagreed with him openly. I said it. I granted the interview. I remember the Vanguard one in particular. I said, I am Tinubu's guy. He's my man, but I'm sorry. <laughs> On this one, I can't defend him. People expect you to defend him. That's what they call loyalty. My loyalty first is to my country, not to an individual. My loyalty. And, and that's why I like what Atiku is doing. Atiku has transferred the body to the country. That look, this is no, no longer about me. I don't have to be president. I will not support a Muslim Muslim ticket. Is that not leadership? In a plural society, somebody will encourage a Muslim Muslim ticket because he feels it will favor him. No. That's transactional. I'm not, I'm not transacting business. So I'm not, I'm not in the business of politics. I'm a media personality in politics. That's all. And that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. That look, we, can't, we just cannot continue like this. And they are not telling Tinubu the truth. They've always lied to him. 
I know one of them. I'm challenging him. The Chukwan said, I know one of them. Anytime he came to my house in the past, we took about the Kuyomi, the man he smokes, he's the only person who breaks the code of no smoking in my house in Ghana. He will go to Ghana, come to my house, and he will be smoking. They will abuse the Nubu from morning till night. They can challenge me. This person. And when I say, ah, but why don't you go in and tell her God? They say, no, ah, if you tell him, you become his enemy. They will block you. They will, yes, that is what we see, the hypocrisy. So all these ones are abusing me here. They don't know anything about these political things. They don't know anything. You think I don't like money, or you like money more than me? But I've chosen my freedom above money. Freedom. I can't be at my age again be doing boy boy up and down. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, whatever God gives us, we will manage. We will manage it. All the so-called activists are quiet. Well, it's their choice. If, whether they are quiet, it's possible some of them might wake up later. <laughs> we were all abusing of us and we were all attacking Yaradua. We were all you know, terrorizing Jonathan. Same thing, Buhari, now because he's half. My loyalty is to Nigeria. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's why I'm so consistent. Uh, me, sound bitter. I sound extremely excited, in case you don't know. I'm so proud. You cannot imagine how happy I am that in the middle of this madness, one man can stand up. Look, there is nobody who is perfect. Nobody is perfect. But I'm saying that you cannot consistently remain imperfect. Nobody. Nobody. What's my selfish interest? My selfish interest is that Nigeria should be great. That all the young men and women of Nigeria are so brilliant, but suffering all over the world, that we will be able to accommodate them in a good country. That's all. What's, what's my bitterness? I can't be bitter. You know when you are bitter, you carry a negative energy. And I can't. I can't. Do I think the Supreme Court... I say we've moved beyond all that. Whether Supreme Court... Whatever decision they take is binding on law, all of us. You can see Atiku is a law-abiding citizen of Nigeria. He is not one of those who will, you know, will fully break the law. So he has done what he needs to do, and the rest is left. My dear, I don't want to be calling names. Chicago State University is open to everybody. And we have seen what came out of it. The shame of it is that Atiku did not go there to contest whether Tinubu went to that school or not. We still don't have evidence. Even now, we don't have the evidence. On this, we read different depositions. So, but even legally, if you enter an institution illegally, what legal whatever legal document you came back with becomes illegal once you are found out. They are very shameless. I agree with you. Some people are very, very shameless. Anybody who is not shameless, they ignore the deluge of forgeries involved. Ask them, dare them to answer questions about government college Lagos. Ask them if they can answer you. Ask them if they can answer you why we have three different dates of birth. Ask them. Okay? Ask them if the university issued that certificate submitted to INEC. Ask them. They will say, oh, he graduated. Who is arguing about whether you graduated or not? Who is arguing it? Ah, Atiku is a man. Huh? <laughs> He's a statesman, an elder statesman who invested his money and everything. He has suffered for Nigeria. He doesn't mind. He doesn't mind. So, it, what is a pre-election matter? There is no pre-election matter. That is why they go to the Supreme Court. Only the Supreme Court can determine what is a pre-election matter. We are not all illiterate. How can I be an enemy within when I've never been 
inside. I've never been inside Tinubu's political family. If you are so ignorant not to know that, I'm telling you on open air that I've never, have you ever seen me in Tinubu's political family before? Ever. What brought us together was MKO, Abiola, and June 12th. That's all. We returned from exile 25 years ago. Have you ever seen me in that political family? I told you I don't share in his political beliefs, so I cannot be a member. So that is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's my choice. You can't force me. The school categorically states that they don't do third party. So it means that anybody can go and print his, his own certificate. Then all of us can, might as well print our certificates. Huh? A certificate must be authenticated by a school. The, the, you go to a third party and the third party will just issue for anybody. How can I ever be bitter? Bitter about what? That God did not make me a slave? That God freed me from all this hanky panky? How can I be? <laughs> Very unfortunate. You see, people, they've made billions already. They are still sweat, sweating up and down. What do you need in life? More than one bedroom, more than what? Go on the website of Chicago State University. CSU does not use third party vendors for certificates. Go and check it. To collect a copy of your certificate, this is what you are required to do. You can see that form. This is not a third party form for your information. So look at it very well. You can go on my Instagram, it's posted there, go and check it. And my advice to Achua Jutinubu is stop listening to these rascals. Stop listening to them. They will make matters worse for you. I'm speaking as someone who loves him and who once upon a time was close to him. So I am begging you stop listening to this rascal. They will make the matters worse for you because the more they resist the truth, the more these young guys will come after you. So because there are too many errors in the past that those who were chopping your money should have done on your behalf. And if they have failed to do it and you cannot fire them, it is unfortunate. Because they failed you. They let you down. They knew you were going to contest election. Everybody was jostling for power and attention without checking if your credentials were intact. When I wanted to contest last year, I, called, I had a team to go and check out everything that we will require before there is nothing they did not check. I had a good team. And when we were ready, in fact, the day we did our screening at the PDP National Secretariat in Abuja, uh, General David Mack was the chairman of that screening committee. And we had former Governor Lucia Gumi Wiku and others you know, on the committee. I was shocked when I walked in. Me, that I had not slept for days preparing for this. When they say I should take a bow, I said, I'm not a senator. How can I take a bow? They said, no, 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 Deleu doesn't know you. We know you. We know you. And this, the, in fact, General David Ma, God bless him for me. God bless him. God bless him. He told me, he said, I read you religiously. I have never seen anyone write so beautifully, intelligently. And everywhere he sees me, that's because we prepared. We had fires, all the fires ready. And we sent to them. So they had it. One member of the committee who obviously was hostile to me, I later find out why he was hostile, he was uh, representing the interest of one of the contestants. They told him to, to calm down. So in life, preparation leads to greatness. You can't be great if you make mistakes as simple as just getting a school certificate ready. We, he didn't even need Chicago 
or any university at all. But because those who are singing on your mandate, which I stand, cannot tell the truth, they cannot find the calling, they are there to go and discuss. Look, the day I went to see Buhari in 2015, you need to see the pictures and the videos. Even ministers were calling me later to ask me that, please, you know, months after, they were still asking me, how do you get that kind of rapport with Buhari? He seems to like you. And I said, it's because I'm not going there to fight for myself. I'm not going there to beg for appointment. I went there with my book. Where is that book? One of these, something like this, but this is not the one. It was a compilation of Pendulum 1. I took my book. He said I should autograph for him. That's why everybody says he doesn't laugh. He doesn't. We joke. Sometimes, yeah, Adele, it seems you have added weight. It seems, you know, we joke because I'm not going to worry to go and beg him for anything. So there is no way you can disrespect me. And then Nigerians now believe that everybody is the same. Na lie, na this, na that. No! 24 years I have not been in government. So what more can I do for my country? I am still blaming those people around Tinubu that you let him down. So stop insulting other people. If none of you could see, including, <laughs> don't let me, let me just leave him alone. He was once upon my, my abu, a lawyer for that matter. And you are defending this thing. But the parina, instead of you being sober and seeing how you will reach, reach out to Nigerians at home and abroad, and say, please save us from this embarrassment. We know there are too many hidden issues. But this is about our country. Please. Tinubu is our man. See who can reach out. Reach out and talk to people. Atiku is not a desperado. No, never. But the more you insult him, the more he has to show you the truth. Since you will not accept the truth easily then you will be forced to, have, to accept it because it's not the one that filled the form. Oh, the university says he graduated. Is graduation the only requirement in NINEC? No, the requirement in NINEC is that if you forge any document whatsoever, it's automatic disqualification. And you guys still cannot see it because you believe you have power of life and death in... Uh, in the Supreme Court, in the appeal courts, and but what of the court of God? Sad. Hmm. Our country will be better if our politicians keep whatever, whether they stole it, they didn't steal it, I don't know, I'm not in, I don't work in the FCC. Keep the money in Nigeria and keep the youths employed. Don't just keep money in the bank doing nothing. Set up businesses that can generate employment for the youth. That's all. Yeah, and anybody wants to go abroad now, the way they will scrutinize your certificate. <laughs> Tinubu never trusted me when we were away. <laughs> when you won't read, when they sent you to school. You didn't read. If you read, I still saw Tinubu less than a year ago in Delta State. Let me see if I can find it here. You won't read when they send you to school. Tinubu. He respects me because he knows I tell him the truth. He knows that I don't have anything against him. What I'm saying now is something that will help him in the future. A leader can say I'm untouchable today, but what about tomorrow? So he knows that I have nothing personal against him. I'm not that kind of character. I beg. Let's look for something so you can see. That we are not joking here. I don't have anything against him. Or. It's somebody you love that you tell the truth. Those who claim, who tell you lies, are they, are they not put him into trouble now? Are they able to rescue him now? You, if you love someone, okay? If you love him, you won't lie to him. It is when you don't love someone that you will tell him lies. Don't tell people you love lies. The moment, imagine, ordinary to, to fill forms, you cannot fill forms properly. You now start blaming other people for it. 
you tell a man graduated from a school that was founded in 1974 that he graduated in 1970 and you are not ashamed to say sorry. <laughs> Doesn't cost you anything to say sorry. Not to me, oh, to Nigerians. Me, I don't need any sorry from anybody, but say sorry to Nigerians. Nigerians deserve your apologies first. Whether they will accept it or not, that's a different thing. But they deserve an apology. But to be rubbing pepper and salt into their injury is unpardonable. 